Hello and welcome to EVs and Beyond. I'm Rich Deadwoods and behind me is what I think is one of the ultimate EV road trip cars you can have in New Zealand, the Aldi V MIFA 9. It's got a seven luxury leather seats back in there, a 90 kilo hour battery, a 350 to 400 kilometer range. I think you can even get a massage, so many features. We're gonna take this thing from up here in Mungify all the way to Christchurch. We're gonna invite you along, but at the same time, part of this video is actually to share some of the tips we've learned over the years of driving electric vehicles uh, about how you can make a road trip easier, more fun, more relaxing, and more kind to the other uh, EV users out there because there's gonna be so many people hitting the road and electric vehicles this summer, particularly new users who may not understand entirely uh, the best way to get around the country. The first one, uh, we'll throw this tip out there straight away, and it's a mistake I've made so many times before, is always leave full. The best place you can ever charge your electric vehicle is at home. Make sure you plug it in a day before you're gonna go. You've got a 100% battery. I've made the mistake before. I've come home from work, forgotten to plug the car in, and gone to leave and realized I was gonna have to charge it a DC charger down the road. You never get that top 20% back. So, it is starting to rain. I'm gonna get in the car and get underway. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, share some of those tips from the road. There's additional preparation you can do to make your trip easier as well. Make sure you have your charging fobs and apps ready. ChargeNet, OpenLoop, ZNG, and BP are the baseline now. PlugShare is a must for checking in at stops. A better route planner and power trip are handy, but more for those that are aiming to stretch their range, not something I would attempt with the variability of summer conditions. Also, do a basic vehicle walk around, check your tire pressures, that can help with efficiency. Also, clean your windscreen and top off your washer bottle. Chargers don't have buckets, brushes, and taps. Right, so we've made it to Auckland and we're about to pick up my co-driver is just arriving. Hello, hello. Now, for those who've watched our videos before, you will have met Graham. He's uh, from the car trade. A little bit of a new to electric vehicles, but certainly uh, learning pretty quickly. Well, I'd say learning very quickly, actually, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> so we've done uh, just over 100 kilometers so far, and we are averaging exactly 20 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Which means that, yeah, theoretically, this is a beyond uh, 400 kilometer car, technically 450, and that's on the open road in some pretty horrendous conditions. Road trip tips. Wet weather, mm. if you can avoid it, uh, avoid it, because it does tend to make you use more power, aside from the fact that the car's wet, it's not as aero, the tires are pumping water out of the way, that's one thing, but you can't do much about that. What you can do a little bit about is think about what you're carrying in the car, and that's particularly important this summer holiday season. So question, if you are gonna take the kids' bikes and so forth, are they going to use them? And also just, you know, remind the family they don't have to take everything. But it's a good point. Yeah. A lot of Kiwi holidays that you see, everyone loads up absolutely everything. And you think about it, do you actually need that? Yeah. And it all makes a difference on your uh, on your energy use. Right, and so, so for the road trip itself, we're just heading out of uh, Mount Roskill. We're going to go to Bombay. And now we don't necessarily need to charge, but that brings me to another one of my tips, is that if you've got to stop anyway, and yes, there's gonna be a, an empty charger nearby, charge, never miss an opportunity to charge. I could drive, we've got 289 kilometers on the, on the gasometer here, theoretically, to Telpo, or, 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 you know, or, or points in between, somewhere closer to Telpo than what I'm going to. But if I did and I got there, and the charger was full, I have no options but to wait. So charge early, charge often. If you think you're going to be near an empty charger, jump on it anyway, grab yourself a coffee, because you just don't know how much of a difference that's going to make to you later on in the journey. Right, we'll uh, catch up with you again at Bombay. Right, we've uh, made it to Bombay. We've discovered this thing is very big and the car parks here are very small. So. We, uh, we said we don't really need to charge, but we're here anyway, we need a coffee. And if we charge here, then chances are we won't need to charge again before uh, we get to Telpo. And I like to use the lovely ChargeNet app. So we're gonna say we are at Bombay Hypercharger. We are on A1 and we're gonna activate. If we look up here, you'll see that they've now got these great big cable holders here. 
just to keep the cables out of the dirt and out of the water. One of the reasons I like to use the charging app, and I've shown this before on road trips, is because you can actually see your session. And you can monitor it, you can see how far you've got to go. Uh, we are charging now at, uh, we're at 59% already. We're about a minute into our charge. It's just uh, running up at 93.7 kilowatts which is pretty good considering that this car is only rated to charge at 90. So they've slightly under, under claimed there. So uh, that's pretty good. We're gonna go grab a quick coffee. And then from here, we're gonna start heading down, hopefully to Telpo. Uh, and uh, yeah, see we go. Right, so we are charged at Bombay and that was a pretty good charging stop. Now this car claims to have a 90 kilowatt hour charging peak, but we actually saw a bit over 100. So in 22 minutes of charging, we took on about 30 kilowatt hours. Now that's given us a uh, range of 361 kilometers in the dynamic GOM. I think that we're only just over 200 kilometers to Telpo from here. So uh, I would say that Telpo is our next stop and because it charged so well on the hypercharger, that's what we're gonna aim for. Now, because it's not the summer holidays, we are gonna go straight there, but normally, as I said, if you drive past a, car, a charger and it's empty, so you drive through T-Rail, duck your head in if there's a charger going, take it because you might not necessarily get the chance later. Right, we're on the Waikato Expressway, which is one of the rare pieces of road in New Zealand with a 110 kilometer an hour speed limit makes it a great place to test my next tip in regards to driving uh, and road tripping in an EV. And that is, relax, slow down a little. Don't worry if you're gonna get there uh, five minutes later, because you're gonna get there later anyway. And uh, it can be more efficient to actually slow down on the road and on your trip. You'll use less energy, you'll get further between charges, and you'll need to spend less time at the charger when you get there. We've been driving along on the flat for a while now and I've been doing some testing. I bought the, bought the MIFA up to 110 kilometers an hour. At 110 kilometers an hour, it seems to be taking about 27, 28 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers to maintain progress. It's hard to tell exactly, the meter's not particularly clear. We could do some bigger testing, but that would be a little, a little bit difficult. Drop it down to 100 and it's more like 20 to 21 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers on flat ground to maintain progress. So you're already seeing a massive gain there just by slowing the vehicle down that little bit. If you go further and drop it down to 90, then you're going to be using, from what I could see, 16, 17, 18 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers to, get, uh, to keep maintain that progress. That doesn't sound massive, but it's huge in the longer run. If we're talking between 90 and 100 and 110, there being you know, a 10 kilowatt hour difference. That, uh, that 10 kilowatt hours on the average of that vehicle is an extra 50 kilometers you can go. Or in regards to charging, uh, another you know, 10 minutes less uh, that uh, you have to spend on the charger. Right, so we've, uh, we've swapped sides in the car. We uh, had a quick toilet break before and we're just now arriving in Telpo. Uh, really good run up to here. Um, so I think we are about 200 and something kilometers from our stop at Bombay. We've still got 108 uh, kilometers on the uh, guessometer and that's actually growing because we had a big climb getting up here and now we're coming back down. It's looking pretty good actually. Yes. Yeah. Similarly, our uh, our efficiency is uh, is still pretty good and dropping. We are running at 22.5. 22.5. And falling. And falling. Mm -hmm. 22.5, according to my maths, gives this vehicle a 400 kilometer open world range, and that seems to be about where this thing is landing. Uh, we're about uh, 370 odd k into the trip now. We've only done 22 minutes, 23 minutes of charging. We're gonna go into what's gonna be one of our bigger charges now for the day at Talpo. Uh, we're gonna jump on the hypercharges there and going to charge for, I would say about half an hour and get us up to about 90%. But that should take us all the way through to Bulls. Now, uh, Graham, your first time driving the, uh, the MIFA, what are you thinking so far? Well, you know, I think it's a really comfortable family wagon. We've talked about its practicality on the open road. We've been across one of New Zealand's worst sections from Bataru coming up over the hill, Tokoroa, down on Taupo, and it's a pretty pretty average road. And yep, sure, it picks up a few of the bumps and bits and pieces um, 
I'd say for a people mover, maybe a little bit of refinement in the suspension department, but overall, this is a really easy vehicle to drive. And I was gonna make a point too, that our economy, we haven't been driving this like a, trying to derive the best economy out of it. We've driven it like an average everyday Kiwi vehicle on Kiwi roads, following traffic, observing speed limits, and these are the sort of economy we're getting. So, yeah. you know, it's pretty impressive from that real world experience. Yeah, yeah. So most of the time when I drive a car on this kind of trip, they tend to underwhelm me for range. This is the first car in a very long time that's overwhelmed me. Let's uh, quickly get some charge, maybe grab some food, and then head on over the central plateau. Right, so we are here at the ChargeNet units at Taupo. Of course, here you can have six charge cars charging at one time. So a top tip, as I said before, is try and aim for the multiple unit locations like this, because it means you've got a lower chance of ending up without a charger to plug into. Now, uh, these things, of course, can charge it up to 300 kilowatts or about, about that. But when there's more charges here, they break it up into still really usable 75 kilowatt chunks. Now, we've discovered something really interesting about the MIFA. Now, we said when we were back at Bombay that it seemed to be charging at a faster rate than what we expected. And it's doing that and more. So before it was doing 100 and it was supposed to do 90, here in Telpo, again, it's supposed to be doing 90. And we're currently at 116, but we peaked at just under 113, 130 kilowatt hours. So that is pretty awesome. We are loading on charge at a rapid rate. That is awesome. And it's those extra charging speeds like this that make finding units like this worth it if you've got a car that'll do it, because that's gonna seriously reduce our charging time, get us on the road that much quicker. Next stop, we kind of run out of hyperchargers, so we're going to be going to a 50 kilowatt unit. I suspect bulls, but we will see. What do we have here? Yeah, very good look. We're on a run. Oh, a Mesa. And here we have a 6'1 one human. <laughs> Trying out the Mifa and she likes it. That's Too bad nice. we just bought a leaf. Hey! <laughs> right, and welcome to picturesque bulls. Uh, in the Manawatu, or Rangitiki Manawatu, one of the two. Uh, now, we have uh, made it here after a great run over the kind of central North Island plateau lump. The Mifa is doing fantastically. I can't believe how efficient this, this uh, minivan is. We're uh, back down, we peaked up to about 25 uh, kilowatt hours per hundred kilometres. We're back down to 20.7 kilowatt hours per hundred kilometres, which is sticking to that 400k uh, open world range kind of measure. Uh, it's, uh, it's just been comfortable, easy to drive, really happy, even with the weather really bad. Now, earlier today we discussed not stopping, you know, planning to stop before the last stop you have to have. Give yourself options. And in this case, we'd plan to stop at Bulls, uh, but there's actually a car on the charge here. But because this thing's been relatively efficient and because we plan to stop early, we've got 123 odd K left to go on our GOM, which means we can run on two further charges down the road. And the next two charging stops have two charges each. So that's a great safety backup to have. Well, uh, best laid plans of mice and men. We just finished that recording and uh, the owner of the other current turned up, he's leaving. So we've now got the charger to ourselves. So in fact, we're gonna charge here and go and grab some food and then we'll head off. One more leg to go to Wellington. We don't need to get a full charge. I think we realistically only need about another 10, 20%. Uh, so we should be here not a long time. Uh, just an update for uh, everyone again. Yeah, we've charged now. We've got 224 k's of range. Uh, we have under 150 k to run to Wellington. Uh, so yeah, we are going to get there, I guess, about 11 o'clock. Mm -hmm. 